Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me as I continue on my journey talking about autoimmunity. If there's one thing about me is that I am relatively boring in focusing on the same issues over and over again. I've been saying the same thing since April 2020. Severe COVID-19 is a viral mediated autoimmune disease. And it's important because it has relevance to how we treat the disease and what we do and the kinds of diseases we look out for after having COVID-19, or as some people say, the elephant in the room. So what am I going to be talking about very quickly today is this paper here. And this paper is talking about incident autoimmune diseases in association with SARS-CoV-2 infection. Very important paper out of Germany. And um, so it's, in, it's a critical point for us to understand. And I'd want everybody to know a little bit more about it. Before I start, as usual, I'd like to remind you, if you're interested in terms of COVID long haul infection and vaccination, I'll be doing that presentation coming up shortly. There is a link in the description where you can register. Additionally, just after, coincidentally, I'll be talking about diabetes, COVID, and vaccines, why autoimmunity is so critical. So again, I'll be expanding on some of those thoughts. But let's get back to the point today. Why is it that COVID autoimmunity is underestimated and why is it so important? So let's see if I can give you a little bit of context about what it is that I'm focused on. So autoimmunity in COVID or autoimmunity generally is just speaking about the immune system, okay? So this is your immune system targeting normal proteins in your body, okay? So it's kind of like in a war where you have troops supposedly attacking the enemy, but if you imagine the enemy puts on the uniforms or the tags for the troops that are attacking them, suddenly they are not sure who is their enemy. And anybody shooting could be an enemy. So they start shooting at everyone. That's kind of like what happens in an autoimmune disease. The body is no longer recognizing normal proteins as being part of the body. And they think they could be part of a bacteria or a virus or something else. And that's technically an autoimmune disease. It's complex, not easy to treat and something that we need to try and avoid at all costs. So within that framework, this is why autoimmunity is so critical to try and understand. And so here are just some basic points around the virus itself. So I've got here an image of the virus, and you can see there, so in the blue points here are the spike proteins, and they've been expanded to look something like this. So this is a close-up look of the spike protein that is sitting in the viral envelope here. This gray part here, this ball is the virus, and then the spike protein is what the virus uses to enter cells. And at the top here is the receptor binding domain where it usually binds ACE2 to get inside a cell. Perfect. Now, all viruses will use some kind of entry receptor. It just so happens this virus uses primarily ACE2 as the entry receptor. So very early on, we were looking at the risk of autoimmunity because you can have the body recognizing ACE2 as being foreign. And that's technically an autoimmune response. And when you look carefully at what can happen to the spike protein, you can have here, this is ACE2, it binds to the receptor binding domain. But guess what? There are a number of other proteins that bind to different parts of the spike um, protein. And theoretically, almost anyone or all could get caught up if the immune system picks up this spike protein with these proteins attached then you could get autoantibodies 
to neuropilin 1, DC cyanase 2, furin. And that's the principle about autoimmunity in COVID-19. Now, we've been saying the same thing since 2020. And that concern is why I say that you have to be so careful with how you treat COVID-19. So that's the background. How does it fit in with this paper that I'm talking about here? So this paper is an important one, and I'll show you here some details about it. So this was uh, done in clinical rheumatology, talking about incident autoimmune diseases in association with SARS-CoV-2 infection. And I repeat, infection, a matched cohort study. It was actually published in June 2023. And the authors are primarily from Germany. Uh, so this person here is Dresden in Germany, is the main author. And, um, and so there is a slight correction, but not to worry about that. What they were doing, they were looking at routine healthcare data in Germany. And they were looking at people who were identified with a positive PCR, confirmed COVID-19, through December 31, 2020, okay? And so they matched them, a control group, and the people who had COVID-19, and they followed them up until June 30th, 2021. An important point in this here is that this was just purely about COVID-19. There was nothing in here that mentioned anything about vaccination, and they didn't actually discuss if there was an overlap in any of the cohort with regards to that. It's possible, but I think that they were trying to say that was a low probability before vaccines were rolled out to the general population. So this is primarily focused on COVID-19 infection itself that was triggering potentially autoimmunity. So, as I said, let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So here is the paper again, and I've highlighted some areas that I thought were very important. And you can see here that they found a 42.63% higher likelihood of acquiring autoimmunity for patients who had suffered with COVID-19. And patients who had a more severe course of COVID-19 were at greater risk for incident autoimmune disease. This is very important. And it fits in with exactly what I've been saying. So, and the point is, is not whether or not I am right or whether somebody else is wrong. It's the implications of this being an autoimmune disease that are so important to understand because it highlights what you can treat it with, how you treat it, and critically what you look for in the future when it comes to people who have had COVID-19 and what you do. Critically, I've always said that was why I was so careful and cautious when we were doing the rollout. I was saying, listen, target it. Because if it's autoimmunity as the primary mechanism, you don't want to risk that in people who are in the low-risk cohort anyway. That was one of the reasons why I was always focused on targeted, very targeted. You know who is high risk, you target them. If they have had infection, no point. You only focus on your high-risk cohort who had not been exposed. That was my perspective from 2020. And I think that autoimmunity being underestimated is one of the great reasons why we've made a big mistake in the pandemic. But time will tell. As I always say, I don't mind being wrong. My responsibility is to ask the question. So when they looked at the kinds of autoimmune diseases that would occur, um, first onset of uh, autoimmune disease, the incident rate there was about 15.05 Top of the list are things like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Graves' disease, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis. So these are some of the conditions that have been associated and that they found in this cohort. And what was very important about this cohort was the numbers. So they were looking at a huge number of people. And when you look in a bit more detail 
uh, their cohort, their insurance group. And the insured individuals, you're talking about 38 million that they were um, trying to identify. And when they went down to the post-COVID cohort, we're talking about 641,000 individuals. This is one of the biggest studies of its kind. And so the information that comes out of it is extremely relevant from a scientific point of view and should not be ignored. Um, and so this is this is big stuff. So when they looked, as I said, and they studied this in detail, and they looked at all the associated autoimmune diseases, then we come to the discussion. And as I said, the link is in the description. If you want to look at the paper yourself, see the points and go into finer detail. This is just a highlight of the paper. Here is the discussion point. And they were pointing out that the excess risk for any newly diagnosed autoimmune disease was 4.5 per 1,000 person years in this study. That's big. That's quite significant. And the highest estimates for diseases were rheumatoid arthritis, Trojan's disease, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, with an approximately 40% higher rate compared to the match cohort who were not infected. And even with those who had a prior autoimmune disease, they had a 43% higher likelihood of de uh, developing uh, another incident autoimmune disease more than controls. These are big numbers, especially across a population of millions of people. Autoimmunity here has been grossly underestimated. The thing about autoimmunity is that it is often silent. And so for people who aren't looking for it, you're not going to find it. Autoimmunity is something you have to actively seek out to try and find. And if you're not doing that, you're not doing the proper science. When we think of clinical work, when you are looking for an autoimmune disease, you have to even know which autoantibody to target. It's not just general. For each autoimmune disease, there are different autoantibodies that give you a clue to the diagnosis. You don't stumble into it. Autoimmunity is one of those hidden diseases that can have significant impact on the health of people over a long period of time. I, I liken it to the silent disease like hypertension. If you don't look for hypertension, by the time it has caused its damage, it's too late. It's the same with autoimmunity. You need to actively seek for it in order to understand and find it. Final point on this, here you have, this is in the conclusion, the autoimmunity hypothesis is supported by a body of evidence linking viral infections to the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases, as well as results from recent clinical and a basic research de demonstrating persistent autoantibodies and serological autoreactivity following infection in a subset of patients. So they are recognizing that autoimmunity is extremely important. It's sad that it has taken almost three years for the scientific community to focus on this, because as I said, the implications for the long term, if we miss this, are horrific. It's not easy to resolve. And I haven't even touched on what do you do in the context of autoimmunity and stimulating the immune system. I haven't touched that because that in itself is a frightening concept. And that's where we are at the moment. There are big questions to be answered. No easy answers here. And for anyone who ignores this point, and I say this categorically, if you are and listening to anybody speaking about the longer term risks around the pandemic, and they don't have autoimmunity as a central aspect of that risk assessment, I don't think that they're in a position to be giving any kind of directions. Autoimmunity needs to be understood. We need to be studying this with every amount of research that we could. It's sad that it has been missed for so long and the implications are not easy to fix. 
So again, as I said to people before, there are no easy answers here. There is no easy way out. We still have a lot of work to do, but it's not a time for us to focus on the mistakes that have been made because we can still learn how to find mitigation strategies with a good, thorough understanding of the pathophysiology of the disease. Have a great evening, everyone.